Hello and welcome to Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, A Noob's Journey, Part 1. I'm VG247's Dave Cook and I'm playing this game on the Wii U. Like, you'll see a lot of reviews coming out for this game this week, but I thought I'd do something a little bit different because I've not actually played the old Monster Hunter games, so I don't really have a frame of reference for you know, comparing this game to like the older games in the series. So I thought I'd come at it with fresh eyes and just chart my journey from the, the sort of humble beginnings all the way through to battling bigger monsters with like really cool gear and such. As you can see, it's a JRPG and a very colourful one at that. It's full of grand vistas, big open areas and, and lots of cool things to discover. You start off in a town, a little fishing village that's come under attack from a, a nearby sea beast and it's your ultimate sort of journey to uh, to track it down and find a way to stop it. There's plenty of town exploration, NPCs to speak to and just people to generally, you know, whittle away time speaking to. They, they offer lots of advice and this woman here is a guild leader. She can actually dispense quests. Uh, now quests will get you things like extra weapons, resources, crafting uh, items, armour and there's even this little pirate cat who can send you off in his boat to really high level hunts. Um, I wouldn't recommend these till a bit later though because they're very very tough. The rewards are massive though. You also have a house with a treasure chest that can be used to store all of your unwanted goods and it even comes with a cat butler who can dispense extra gameplay advice and a bed that you can use to save. Like all good JRPGs, the towns are full of shops. Here you can spend your currency on things like weapons, extra resource craft items and more. There's even a blacksmith where you can make weapons but you really have to be aware of how the weight of each weapon affects your character. Just like in Dark Souls, stamina plays a big part in combat, so you don't want a weapon that's too heavy or else you won't be able to swing it very fast and it'll drain your stamina like crazy. However, the damage payoff of heavy weapons can sometimes make them worth it. You can see here this big sword. I'm using it to cut down these dinosaurs with one hit each. However, the slow speed of attack leaves me open to counterattacks from enemies, so I'm just lucky that these herbivores aren't that aggressive. Once you defeat enemies, you can then loot their corpses for things like bones, raw meat and other resources used for crafting. Once you have meat in your possession, you actually have to sit down and cook it. This weird little mini game with a strange little tune comes up. Cook it for too long and it burns, don't cook it for long enough and it stays raw. It took me a while to get the sweet spot right. I had to actually waste a lot of meat to make this work. And as you can see, if you eat something that isn't cooked just right, it really doesn't do you much good. All you can keep doing is trying, 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 and trying again, until you get it right. When you're not making a mockery out of meat, you can forage around the starting area as many forests and coves in search of mushrooms, herbs and other items that can be used to make potions. Your first mission is to help the Elder Son establish a base camp for all of the hunters in the area. This is where you can accept quests, manage resources and other things. But to do that, first you need resources to rebuild the camp. You do this by fighting all of these weird raptor-like dinosaurs in this cave. This is where the real battles first kick in. You can see here I'm wielding a massive katana and it's taken me a long time to swing it. These guys are very nimble so they'll go in for an attack the first chance you give them. It's here you'll learn the importance of dodge rolls and stamina. But as with every battle in Monster Hunter, every defeated enemy gives you resources that take you one step further in your character's progression. I also quickly find out that the giant katana is no good for flying enemies. These guys are just way too fast to hit properly. I also found this weird farm just off of the main town. It has a pig wearing a nappy and it has a red bow in its tail. I'm really not making this up, you can see it right in front of me. You can give it a name and dress it up in all sorts of funny outfits. The whole thing just seems really bizarre to me and very very JRPG. You can even lean in and give it a big hug. Just like cooking the meat though, if you do it for too long, the pig gets really mad. Check this out. So 
Sorry, 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 sorry. So yeah, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. I'm really enjoying it. And it's kind of strange that I didn't check out the previous games because, as a JRPG fan, I really would have enjoyed them at the time. That said, I'm really enjoying this game now and I'll be tracking my movements as I progress. So stay tuned for more Noob's Journey blogs on VG247, coming soon.